Welcome to JCTV Spotlight on the Arts. Um, uh, easing, you could say, into the fall season here in Jefferson City, Missouri, the capital of uh, the state of Missouri. I'm your host, Rick Jay, and I have a very important guest with me today, Miss Peggy King of Columbia, Missouri. Miss King is what we call a fused glass artist. Uh, creator, in fact, I like to term it, uh, I first here on Spotlight on the Arts. She will enlighten you uh, with information and all that is involved in the art of glass fusion or fused glass, should we say. So we'll be right back. Welcome once again to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm truly excited to turn the spotlight on uh, you today, Miss King. I enjoyed a presentation recently at the Jefferson City Art Club where you were the presenter of the evening. And it's, it's really a pleasure to have you uh, with us here at the round table today, Peggy. Well, thank you, Rick. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Well, if I may call you by your first name, uh, since I've been using it freely. <laughs> Please tell us a little bit about you and those highlights of your life that best describe Peggy King. Peggy has been uh, a bookkeeper, uh, an analyst for all my life. Uh, I just retired uh, several years ago from a 28-year career in, in that line. Oh. So this is using my other brain. Uh -huh. I uh, am finding the artist in me which actually didn't happen until I turned 50. Uh, all of a sudden I found glass and it just brought something out in me that I love. Uh, a passion, I yeah. guess we could say. Melting glass is, is a passion. Uh -huh. uh, it, there's different ways to do it, but I, I use a kiln and fuse uh -huh. my glass. I see. So that's where we have fused glass mm -hmm. or oven baked, I guess yeah, you could say. Yeah, we call it baking, uh, cooking. Um, not a shake and bake, I no, guess. No, 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 you don't want to shake it, no. <laughs> Oh, very good. Excellent to have you here. Um, well, you can, if you would, share us your path of becoming that fused glass person, uh, past experiences and schooling, maybe degrees. Now, Actually, I have no formal training, oh. um, aside, you know, from workshops and things that I've taken. Uh, until I found glass, I just was a confirmed non-artist. Oh. I had no idea that I was an artist because I couldn't draw. Oh, so, <laughs> I found out that there is more to that than more to art than drawing. So that's really been an uh, I know, eye opener. It's heart been opener. a journey. It certainly has. Uh, oh, that's great. Now, what turned you to that? That's, I don't. So many are they go to an art exhibit and they're, you know, they're inspired by it. just looking at one piece and say, I think I want to do that. Did you go to an uh, art? I just no, this, it was a strange thing that I still can't explain because I okay. don't know why it happened. Um, I was looking through the adult ed catalog one night and saw a, a lamp working course, which is making glass beads over a torch. And I took the course and I don't know why. I oh. never had a fascination for glass or, or I don't know, I still don't know why. So I took the class, I bought my torch, I started making beads and, and melting the glass is what got me. Oh. But I didn't have the patience to, to really devote to the lamp working. I, so I went back to the same instructor and took a glass fusing course. Oh, I see. And that was it. I was sold. I bought my first kiln that night. Uh, and I've been pretty much self-taught. Uh, have taken some intensive classes in, in glass fusing and different uh, techniques. But for the most part, it's um, doing research and, and finding things that inspire you and then making it your own. From that point uh, yeah. of in inspiration. Um, now is there, a, is there, a, is it a sight thing or a smell? You know, I love to work with oils, not only the blending capability on the canvas, but I still like the smell of oils. 
it seems like uh, much different than acrylics. So I just, I guess, just heating glass and watch it, and the magic happens. It's the magic of, uh, of starting with a sheet of glass and and having it melt and become something else. Right. And we're going to talk about how that all begins and what glasses you use and, okay. and uh, some tips or whatever. Maybe you'll inspire someone else today. Uh, again, that's why we, we have the show. And, and uh, thanks to you artists throughout uh, mid-Missouri and uh, the nation, in fact, uh, uh, we are opening up the eyes and hearts and inspiration for many people in different areas of the arts. So, uh, I, I, it's great. It's, I look forward to that uh, second segment as okay. we get into the description of the glasses and, and what has to happen. Well, let's see. You uh, have shared with us that what, what you can do about the many functions where your glass using skills come into play. Like, uh, I, under, I understand my, look at my notes here, an award from the Missouri Arts Council in, back in 2012. Actually, that, that was a commission to create the Missouri Arts Council Awards for 2012. Oh, I see. So they commissioned me. Every year they use another glass artist or another type of glass. Sometimes it's blown, sometimes fused. And so they contacted me to make the awards, which went to, of course, the award winners that year. All right. I think we have some pictures you've provided, which we'll bring to the timeline. As we're discussing, well, oh, that's quite an honor. Uh, it was an honor. Uh, yes. yes. Now, also, I'm, I'm very impressed, and I'm going to have a, a lady on with us, best of Missouri hands, uh, that you've also uh, been asked to do work for them, and I look forward to visiting with Marshall Menendez. Exactly. Uh, coming up, I uh, think it's uh, in the month of November this year. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, tell us a little about, about your experience with the Vista Missouri Hands. They have been wonderful. I, uh, I started very slowly making some pieces, and I was selling in a little shop in Eureka. Um, and uh, the woman who owned the shop suggested I contact Best Missouri Hands, and I did. And, I, and I'm so glad I did, because I became, in, involved with these wonderful people who are so giving and supportive um, and helped me uh, improve my jury photos so that I could get into, oh, you know, into good shows and, and uh, they just help all along the way. Uh, we do professional development programs uh, every year. We have, this year we had some uh, regional workshops on um, social media and photographing art and various topics that are uh, really hands-on and helpful for our members. I see. I was a, I'm a two-term president, Best Missouri Hands, and now I'm their bookkeeper and their web uh, developer and their membership keeping track of rubber and all. <laughs> I see. So, well, you, so you play a big part. And I can tell with your, your enthusiasm and your expertise, um, uh, again, that passion that mm -hmm. you're naturally taking care of. Um, you've learned from them. Now you yes. want to um, pay it forward somewhat. Uh, yes, that's and so important. That's really important to know that Best of Missouri Hands will work with you and develop mm -hmm. your own program along the way and your workshops, definitely. So we want to definitely put a plug in for Best of Missouri Hands. You can go to the website and, and uh, see and learn more. So, and I, again, I look forward to visiting with uh, Marsha Menendez uh, in the month, I believe it's November of uh, this year. And so. she will tell you, I'm sure, about our conference, our annual conference coming up next year. So. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, that's good. Well, we must take a break, Peggy. Okay. So please make yourself comfortable uh, while we look at uh, these special messages. Uh, after the break, Ms. King will share more with us and explain the meaning of snow gl snowflake glass and more. So stay with us. There's a lot more here on Spotlight on the Arts. G morning sunshine. Wakey wakey. Text me. I think it might be one of the Are your parents home later? We can hang. L U V love you. J K. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. X O. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. 
nude pics, send me some. Text me. Welcome back, everyone, to Spotlight in the Arts. As I said at the round table with Miss Peggy King of Columbia, Missouri, showing her a technique and skills and passion for the art of uh, fused glass. Uh, please welcome me, uh, welcome with me, uh, Miss Peggy King, back to the second segment of the show today. Well, Peggy, before the break, you shared so much information. Can you now share with us the meaning of snowflake glass? I picked up on that and how it is used in your craft of fused glass. Uh, since we first met at the meeting in Jefferson City Art Club, I ran across a snowflake uh, bolo tie that a gentleman <laughs> made for me, and it's called Snowflake Bezonite. I believe oh, okay. it was. And it's so uh, I first think of the snowflake. And again, snowflake, I know you use that as basically a description of your, uh, your uh, company, mm -hmm. uh, what have you, as a name and logo. So tell us a little bit about snowflake glass. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very simple, Rick. Uh, working with glass, you learn real quickly that it's hard to reproduce things, and so no two are alike. Ah. And that's where the snowflake candle came from. Actually, it was kind of my husband's idea. Um, to do the no two are alike is kind of my tagline oh, yes. for my company. Not, not, no two are like snowflakes, therefore when you begin your process, there's no two that are alike. Uh, yeah, it's kind of worthless trying to create mimic two. Yeah, copy. you can kind of mimic, but it's not going to be exactly the same. Oh, I see. It's always a surprise when it comes oh, out. That of really camp. makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. I can see where you were talking earlier in uh, the first segment about uh, you never know basically what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. Yeah, like kind this. of, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> if you recall. Well, I see. So that's how you picked up and using the name of Snowflake Art mm -hmm. uh, in your uh, fused glass. Uh, what can you share now with us? Um, uh, there's, I looked before us, different types of glass. So take your time and, and tell us what types of uh, glass you work with and and then uh, how they play a part in these beautiful pieces, awesome pieces that we have before us. Okay, uh, glass that I use is normal, like chic glass that stained glass artists use. However, it's um, very finely made to uh, be compatible is the term we use. So uh, there are two major lines of glass, uh, types of glass that we use. They're not compatible with each other. So oh, if you fuse them together, they'll melt together, but they're not going to stay together. You're going to have them, oh. they're going to break, oh. sometimes kind of spectacularly, sometimes in the kiln, sometimes a week later. So you're careful to keep the different types of glass And separate. you picked this up through, again, training in your classes, and workshops. And all my uh, research online, I've done a, oh, wow. yeah, a lot of research, even before I took my first class, oh. on the com uh, compatibility issues of glass, um, types of glass. There's, um, this is a iridized glass back here. This is a dichroic glass. Dichro is something I use a whole lot in my work. Wow. Um, these two panels behind me are all dichroic glass, which is um, created actually in a vacuum chamber with ion guns. It's a very high tech. Oh, ion gas? Yes, ion and gun. very few people make dichroic glass. Ah. Um, but it, it's, it's a, kind of a metallic coating uh, on the glass. So that comes to you. In, in what form? In you sheet form. In sheet form. Mm -hmm. And then you cut it? I, I cut it, I slice and dice it, uh, as you can see here. Actually, this is made from scrap glass. Ah. So after I create something, I have all the scrap in a pile. And when I, and when I get enough, then I do a jigsaw here, ah. which is created by taking my scrap and fitting it in the jigsaw puzzle. I see. So it, it's... Um, it's kind of challenging, but it's very relaxing. There's so much depth to the one on the right. You've mm -hmm. created the focal point in the middle, and it looks like it actually goes back into the, it does. the depth of it, with snowflakes almost. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, um, 
samplings of dichroic glass. They're very beautiful pieces of glass. <coughs> As you might hopefully can see, if you look at this piece of glass from a different angle, mm. it changes colors, oh. thus the dichroic name, two-color oh, di dichroic. Di so that's um, a special property of dichroic glass and the fact that it changes colors. Uh, and design within. And there are so many different designs that you can get. So um, I love working with this. These circles I cut out of a sheet. Uh, and they will become a uh, similar plate to, to oh, this. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. um, so that's, that's, it's just shape. So that's the dichroic in the solid state, uh, you could say. Awesome. Yeah, but it comes in all these other forms too. You can get it in what's called noodles, or little shapes. They're, these are all dichroic glass. And it all just, oh. It's so much fun to work oh, with. Oh, I see, yes. So not only in the solid <clears throat> plate form, but these pieces. That All nice. kinds of pieces you can buy. Water, these are cut with a water jet uh, machine that uses water to slice. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, so they come in all different shapes too. Frogs and, well, there's some uh, oh, I see. little Crab guys down here. There's frogs. some snowflakes up there. Snowflakes. It's, and so oh, you can buy it in all kinds of shapes. I see, well that, uh, I could picture cutting those out, but if it comes in shapes, that really would assist you in, oh, your, yeah. in yeah. your overall plan. Uh, that's beautiful. And uh, so what other types? Do you have little beads looking? Uh, oh, these types. Um, these are, these materials. little guys are called Marini. These are, these particular ones have kind of a bullseye pattern, if you, I hopefully you can see on, on the oh, DVD. Uh -huh. They're made, in my shop, they're made by pulling these rods, which are actually, when I pull them, they're about four feet long. I have a kiln that has a hole in the bottom of it. And I put a pot of glass in it and get that all heated up. The pot's got a hole in it, too. Oh, I see. And when it's hot enough, we can pull cane out of the pot. And like I say, it comes about four feet, and then I cut it off. These little guys are snipped from the rods and used to create something along these lines. Oh, isn't which is that's a awesome. Mm. Marini bowl, or here's a, a plate that I've made out of the same Marini. Oh, it's excellent. Well, that's beautiful. So those, yeah, those are fun. That was a like a five-day course I took to learn how to make this, uh -huh. starting from scratch. Um, so these are... These can be made in all kinds of patterns. There are some amazing patterns that people are paying, pulling. I Cross see. hatches and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Mine are mainly bullseyes. Bullseyes, I see. Yeah. Well now, most people, they think they can just get, a, as we used to say, a soda bottle and melt it down. I guess so you should straighten the, our, uh, <laughs> our viewers out on the Well, so. what you can do, and, and a lot of people do make, use wine bottles, uh -huh. and they slump the wine bottles into a mold, ceramic mold similar to a ceramic mold that I would use to create this shape. Um, and they use them for cheese trays or olive uh, trays or, you know, um, sure. various olive. vegetables. So, so you can, you can slump those. You can, um, the problem with by using uh, recycled glass to fuse it is again, you don't know what type of glass it is and whether it's compatible. Uh -huh. So, so mixing, two, you know, taking two bottles and trying to mix them together and trying to fuse them together could not work. But with this type of glass that you buy on the market, I know what kind. You of You know exactly is. what is compatible. Right. So, if you're trying to melt down your wine bottles and fuse them together, I don't. It may not work. <laughs> That's right. I got that really. It clear. may not work. <laughs> <laughs> and and the bad thing about that is if you're if you're giving this away as a gift or selling it. It might be a year before uh, the stresses inside that glass build up enough uh, that it you would. Uh, you would not want to be giving away no, something. No, no. So, so, so I, this is a safer, all around, I guess, process. So. By what you you know what it is. Yes, good. Now I know it's probably got to be a long process. Can you 
step us through a few of the steps. Basically, you, you have to cut the glass, and I'll let you take it from there. Okay. Um, we'll pretend this is a big sheet of black glass. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, well, I'm going to make one of these uh, jigsaw pieces. So I've got my black glass cut out to shape. And then I start pulling my scrap glass out of my bin, and we'll pretend these are pieces of scrap. And it's just, it is ju a matter of designing something that is pleasing. Uh -huh. um, now, come here, guy. <laughs> and uh, so you just, you, it's really a design issue. You just put the pieces together and the design you want. And this could be a plate. Take this little guy off in the end, because he's, he's got a little bit of black on him. I see. So. So you lay them out. Lay them out. Get your design. And, uh, you know, this could be a plate. I see, yes. Or, or, or a piece of wall art. And I have a little glue that I glue them down just to get them to the kiln so that they don't slide off while I'm all walking to out the of place, kiln. I move out of place. And yeah. All that um, work, lay out. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you take your piece after it's designed. Um, you put it in the kiln and you fire it. Fire. Now. If I'm going to fire flat like this, so it's one flat piece of glass, it's about 1,480 degrees. 1,480 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. <laughs> That's yeah. That's pretty hot. <laughs> Something like this, which I do specially to retain the depth. Oh, yes. So it's not fully fused in. It's still, it's still it's, it's so, attached. Uh, it's not coming off. Uh -huh. But you, you can feel the depth on the sides. Yes. It's still there. And that's about. 1430. So that's less than a little less just heat a, work. A flat piece. I see. So that it's uh, the temperature makes a big difference. It's temperature and the time. There, there's two ah. ways to control the heat work. Uh -huh. What the temperature is and how long it's at that temperature. Right. And you had instructions again on that, but now it's coming sort of natural, I guess. It is. I keep you keep a record of um, your ah. firing schedules for various things. And see what works at yeah. different temperatures. You have to do. develop those schedules because every kiln is going to fire differently. Oh, that's another thing I see. That you, you, when you get a new kiln, you've got to learn how it fires. Learn how it's going to react or mm -hmm. to work for you. That's right. I see. And then it's basically uh, in the kiln for a certain amount of time. It is. Um, most of my firings take about 12 hours because wow. half of it is actually the cooking time. and then. The, another six hours or so to cool down very, very slowly. Oh, I see. A slow, so a slow cool down is very important. Very important. I could imagine. Whether you're making beads over a torch, you know, you have to do it the same. You have to cool them down slowly so they don't crack. I see. Lots of physics involved that I don't really understand the physics, but I understand what I need to do to make the physics work right. The physics and the metabolism, I guess. Of the glass, of the, yeah. The, the glass itself. Yeah. The uh, molecular structure, I know, studying that in the past, is different on a, a lot of things. So I think this would come into play, and molec different molecular structures do act, react different to different temperatures. So I, I can understand that from that. Uh, some what psyche uh, <laughs> idea. No. Well, one of those important things about those molecules is that as you, as the uh, glass is fired and it starts coming down, that you have to stop the firing. And and most my work is in around 900, 960 phase. You have to stop it there, and let it just garage at that temperature, usually a half hour, an hour, depends on how uh -huh. thick the glass is, uh -huh. because you're getting those molecules all lined up. You're annealing it. Yes, uh, annealing, I'm familiar with that term. So uh -huh. that's another part of that kiln firing process, and it's all so in a schedule. So you just turn the kiln off at, uh, when you think it's ready. You have to come down with temperature, mm -hmm. slowly let those molecules realign. Right. Uh, and Take uh, the stress out of them. Take the stress out of them. And then begin then you can your, turn it off. Turn it. And how long do you uh, take for non-stress or to go through annealing? Annealing. Yes. Um, it depends on your glass. It, I, anywhere from a half hour to an hour for just oh, normal. But if you're if you're firing something really thick, mm -hmm. and you know some people do some thick firings, then annealing has doubles like every. I don't. I don't know. I usually don't fire thick. But the the thicker you get, the longer you uh -huh. have to anneal it. I see. I was thinking of another 12 hours, maybe. <laughs> no. um, there are 
some people that are working with things that are so temperamental yes. that yeah, they, oh. they have that stuff in the kiln for a couple days. Oh my. So that is such an interesting process. And that leads me to my next statement. You know, Spotlight on the Arts attempts to, to inspire our viewers in their own quest, whatever they're taking yeah. up. Would you have a few words that you could share that might inspire someone based on your own personal experiences? Uh, my most important message to other artists or non-artists is don't assume that you're not an artist because you haven't found your niche yet. Uh -huh. Like I told you earlier, I was 50 before I found glass. And I did a lot of crafting type stuff, and, uh, and cross stitch and, and quilting and things, but um, I didn't equate that with being an artist. I see. So it was a big surprise to me when I found this and I be joined Best of Missouri Hands and I, through their encouragement, realized that, yeah, I guess I am an artist. I guess I, yes, um, definitely. Don't, uh, don't close doors that might open something to you that you just fall into and love. Right. No matter how Keep old you are. Keep the doors open. Yes. Yeah. So that's what they always tell us. So, um, can you tell us where we could view some of your artwork? Certainly. I am at uh, the Blue Stem uh, Craft in, in Columbia, which is a, just a marvelous, marvelous gift store of uh, handcrafts in the region. Um, also at Columbia Art League in Columbia, uh -huh. um, at Stone Soup in the Chesterfield Mall, which is a gorgeous gallery. Yes. Uh -huh. um, also at Missouri Artists in Maine in St. Charles. St. Charles. Okay. Uh, on the Loop, our artisans on the Loop, uh, right across from Blueberry Hill <laughs> in St. Louis. And also I'm in Fulton. In Fulton. Uh, art House, art in, Fulton. house in Fulton. Yes. yes. They, they do have some excellent art to uh, on display. They have a there. nice gallery. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Okay, now would you like to, uh, uh, people uh, may be interested in some uh, piece or creating a certain thing for them. Do you have an email or a website? Uh, best contact uh, way to get a hold of you. How, yeah, how I do you? have a website. It's a, okay. it's not an e-commerce site, but it, you can view my work there. It's snowflakeglass.com. Oh. Easy enough to remember. And you can contact me through there or through glasslady at snowflakeglass.com. Oh, excellent. Um, I, again, as I said earlier, that I'm not able to reproduce an item, but if you see something there that you like, let me know and, and let me know the colors that you're interested in and I can, I can probably get something that'll satisfy you pretty well. Sounds good. Well, Ms. King, uh, I want to thank you once again for contributing to Spotlight on the Arts. It's, it's really been inspiring and educational uh, to visit with you. Uh, so on behalf of Spotlight on the Arts, JCTV, uh, would you have any other closing words for our viewers? Just follow your passion. If you find something, follow it. Excellent. Thank it's you. very, it's very fulfilling. Thank you once again. Yeah. Well, my thanks also goes out to JCTV producer and crews, uh, Glory Enlow and Art Gerhard, who's uh, operating the controls today. And thank you, our viewers, for joining us uh, worldwide now through our friend uh, YouTube. Uh, look for more Spotlight on the Arts. Uh, there's a lot more here on Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Rick J saying, uh, see you next time.